Yeah, Bijan. Okay. Thank you, Monali. Uh, a very good evening, all the participants who have uh, gathered here to listen to the Dr. Bijan's talk. And I don't know whether it's a good afternoon or good morning to our overseas friend, Glenn Parker. Uh, I greet you whether good morning or good evening. And uh, today uh, is the third uh, talk of our ongoing series on the uh, lecture series on orthography development for tibeto burman languages of Northeast India. And we are very happy to have our invited speakers, Dr. Bizet A. D. Souza among us. <clears throat> Today he's going to talk on the topic orthography development for uh, Russo Akka. And we are super excited to listen to you, the story of how you have developed the uh, orthography for Russo Akka. So before I uh, invite and uh, call our dear person for today's talk, Bobita, I would like to give a brief bio note on Dr. Bizet. So uh, Dr. Bizet D'Souza specializes in phonology, language documentation, and revitalization. He has worked extensively with the Soaka indigenous community of Arunachal Pradesh for over 20 years, contributing to the development of orthography, publication of the first written literature, and the revival of the Rousseau language. And having completed his PhD studies in linguistics at the University of Oxford, he currently serves as the director of the Lake Northern Institute of Language and Culture, uh, which is based at Guwahati. He is an associate member of the Faculty of Linguistics, University of Oxford, and academic and research guide of the Aka Rousseau Language Academic. Now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Bobita uh, to kindly chair the session. Over to you, Dr. Bobita. Thank you, Dr. Bijin. Uh, in fact, uh, we're very uh, happy uh, to have with us uh, distinguished uh, resource persons here. Thank you, Dr. Vijay D'Souza for being here this evening. Uh, now, uh, we, I think the session is over, open and it's up. It's over to you, Doctor. Doctor Vijay, please. Uh, thank you, Doctor Vijay and uh, Doctor Bavita. Uh, it's a great privilege to be here. Um, I have been very appreciative of uh, the work of Tiblani. Um, thank you and congratulations uh, on the wonderful work that you have been uh, doing today. What I am going to uh, do basically is to share with you a story, a uh, little bit of history, a little bit of mythology, and a uh, little bit of phonology. Um, so I hope uh, we will have a, a, a wonderful discussion at the end. Uh, so basically, it's, a, it's my own personal experience with the, uh, working with the Rusuaka community for about 23 years, and um, how um, uh, they have taught me more than I have uh, been able to uh, contribute. So that's the story. Uh, I will, um, I'd like to share my screen now. Let's uh, go straight away to the screen. Can you see the screen? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. So uh, it's an orthographic journey, I call, um, of uh, the Urso Aka language. And uh, I'm here on behalf of NILAC and Aka Language Academy, of which I am uh, I have the privilege of being a member. Um, so before we proceed, um, the slides are not moving for some reason. Yeah. I would like to acknowledge these um, uh, bodies, these organizations, Aka Shotkokunu, the apex body of the Akas, uh, the people of Gijri, uh, Paliji, Trijino, and Buragaon, and many other villages uh, where I've uh, been, uh, you know, during the, uh, these, this long journey. Um, the Aka documentation team, which we formed in 2005 to the present, also a literature team, which uh, uh, was in existence in, uh, from 2017 to 21, and uh, that became the Aka Language Academy later. 
and many other individuals, friends among the Akka people. The list is very long, so I will not even attempt, but the time is short. So um, thank you for being a part of this journey. And uh, um, they're all uh, busy today with the festival celebration. I don't think many of them uh, are present, but I uh, thank them in their absence. So before the history, uh, prehistory, uh, legend of the eaten up alphabet. Um, this uh, legend is present in many um, Northeastern tribes, uh, but I heard it from the Aka people for the first time. Uh, so the legend goes like this. Uh, Busulu Au, the uh, primeval ancestor of the Akas, one day called uh, all the tribes and people uh, for the distribution of writing systems, uh, what they call as Trisatiri. And um, the Assamese came and uh, they got their alphabet uh, on, on palm leaves, Tibetans on a piece of cloth, uh, the Monpas, um, or they all belong to the same stock. So they got their alphabet on, the, on a piece of cloth and they took away their alphabet and then they started writing. But the Uso Aka were late and all the systems and materials to write them, um, uh, write them on uh, were exhausted. So finally, Busulu Au uh, gives them an alphabet on a piece of animal skin. He wrote it then and there and gave, uh, gave them uh, on animal skin. But since they were already late and they were quite hungry, they roasted that skin and ate it up. And therefore, since they ate their alphabet, they do not have an, a writing system now. So therefore, the Aka people say, our traditions are written in our hearts and passed on from mouth to mouth. This uh, is a photograph of a, an actual session where um, our elder, uh, I call him Ay Duva, elder brother Duva, explains to Dorji, the uh, uh, president of our uh, Aka language uh, academy uh, uh, presently. Um, this is what he told us. Our traditions are written in our hearts and passed on from mouth to mouth. So th this belief creates a paradox. The paradox is like this. Uh, two contradictory convictions at the same time. We must write because uh, people are aware that um, if not, our language is increasingly getting endangered and it will uh, die away. Um, this is the only way to uh, help our language survive. We must write. But our language cannot be written because we ate our alphabet. Uh, so these two contradictory beliefs uh, sometimes exist at the same time. Uh, and this becomes a challenge for us to uh, write. And added to this, there is also the fact that um, Osoaka has a very complex phonological system, I, uh, to which I will come a bit later. So um, in developing an orthography, uh, we experienced the following challenges. I, I say we because it was not only my work alone. I, we are always a team. Uh, first of all, answering a felt need of the community. Um, then the Akas, the Akas Society personally requested me in 2006 and 2016, uh, the entire team uh, to write, uh, to uh, promote the orthography. Uh, how do we introduce an alien system of writing uh, in a culturally sensitive and comprehensible way, a culture that believes that um, our, our uh, languages and our memories are written in our hearts and passed on from mouth to mouth. And how do we transition from an oral culture to writing culture? Um, so I'll slightly digress here uh, to discuss some principles of orthography development. Anybody familiar with this work would uh, already know this, but just a revision. I will come to some of these principles later. Um, first, I think the most important thing is any orthography should be accepted by the community. Uh, it should be phonologically well-grounded. Otherwise, there will be a lot of confusion. Um, one letter, one sound, one letter principles. Uh, as linguists, we are aware of this principle. I will not explain this. Uh, transfer of previous knowledge. Uh, this is something important. I will come to this a little later. That is, if you if we are um, taking a script that is already being in use from in other languages, then we, as far as possible, we keep the same sounds. 
we we do not arbitrarily assign sounds uh, to different letters. Um, I, I will come to this a little later because uh, I need to make a point there. It should be child friendly because children are the future of the language. If they do not understand or they find it difficult, um, uh, it, it would be extremely uh, difficult for the language to survive. It should be learnable. Uh, there should be visual visual clarity and clear differentiation. Uh, for example, B and D, we noticed in the field that uh, for, for the first time learners, these this is a big confusion because the letters are mirror images of uh, each other. Uh, so we noticed that adult learners struggling with this. Um, then economical and easily accessible, for example, for an endangered language community like, like also occurs, which uh, uh, do not have a uh, great uh, amount of resources, they should be easily accessible and economical. Um, to explain um, a few of these principles, I'll just dwell on three briefly, uh, because, okay. So community acceptance, one of the questions see under, under this is a question of uh, scripts, which uh, script should we uh, have? Devanagari, Latin, Assamese, Bengali, or unique script. Um, uh, these days, people are very excited about having our own uh, unique scripts. Um, but the Akas in uh, 1999 and again in 2016, uh, sorry, 2017, yeah, 2016 and 17, uh, uh, decided to go for Latin script uh, for uh, various reasons. I will explain to them later, but uh, we can discuss this in a question answer session as well uh, if there's lack of time. A question of representation. Um, for example, this uh, the sound cha uh, palatal uh, affricate uh, is sometimes represented with a single C, but many times C H. Uh, when I suggested that we uh, represent this sound with the single C, um, uh, many of my collaborators said, "No, that is very confusing for us. We are much more used to C H, so let's go for uh, C H." Uh, you know, despite uh, this. Um, uh, you know, decision increasing the number of letters. Um, th there are other uh, things uh, regarding, you know, under this topic we can discuss, but for lack of time, I'll just uh, skip all the other points and then we will come back to it during the discussion if there's time. Um, then it should be phonologically well-grounded. Um, uh, we, we know this uh, confusion between phonemic, phonemic and phonetic representation. Um, for example, in, in Northeast, we struggle with issues like this. Um, in English, uh, pipe is uh, phonemically written with, with, with like this, pa and pa, but phonetically we know that uh, the first one is aspirated, and that would be a different phoneme in uh, Hindi, for example. Hindi speakers would be very sensitive to this, uh, but those who do not have the aspiration in their languages, uh, uh, phonemic aspiration in their in the languages wouldn't hear that uh, difference. Um, this is just one example. There are various other uh, things that are uh, necessary. Uh, one sound, one letter principle is also important. We can see the confusion in English. Uh, 13, 14, or 15 vowels, depending on your dialect, um, are written uh, with only five symbols. So therefore, uh, cup versus not put, but put. So. Uh, sounds are different, but we have two uh, the same vowel representing two different sounds. Um, this would create enormous amount of confusion for our native speakers. Um, also, avoid as far as possible um, digraphs and trigraphs, and for ease of reading, also diacritics. Um, orthography wars in uh, various communities is a big issue, and uh, in Northeast, we notice two um, issues. Um, dialects, the question of dialects, uh, people saying uh, uh, the, the language spoken in my village is the original one. They have different words, different sounds, and uh, all sorts of things like this. Uh, this, this can uh, at times create lots of uh, orthography wars or language wars themselves. Then the quest for perfect orthographies. I will dwell on this uh, point, second point uh, uh, for some time. Is perfect orthography possible? Let us say, uh, let us say one sound, one letter um, uh, ta uh, principle taken to uh, the extreme. Uh, I would like to give a, a concrete example of uh, 
um, hypothetical language here. In a hypothetical language, let us say, uh, th this symbol for Z, English Z, is not used in the current orthography. Let's, let's imagine. Currently, the phoneme in the same language, phoneme nya, is written as N-Y. Um, so someone from the community thinks that one sound, one letter should be strictly followed or enforced. And they say nya should be written as with this symbol, Z symbol, since that letter is free. Um, you may be puzzled with this example uh, or, or maybe laughing uh, at this silly example, but believe me, there are people um, in community struggling with this kind of issues. Um, so what happens? So the person says near since since n y um, is is cumbersome, uh, it violates one sound one letter principle. We should write it, it with this free letters, uh, and uh, um, the word for child. Let us say in the language is nya nya now, and written as uh, n y a n y a. If we and and this is not a happy situation not good, the person says, and pro proposes that we write it with Z, and this is what we are going to have. Now it will be like this. Nya Nya should be written as this, and read as Nya Nya, although um, an English speaking person, one who is familiar with the English orthography, uh, would read it as Zaza, but he would say, in my language, it is Nya Nya. Uh, this would create enormous amount of confusion. Um, so, the uh, point is, we cannot have um, a perfect orthography. Um, among the principles that I listed, one or the other principle is violated in every orthography. Um, so, a per perfect orthography should or will satisfy all the principles of orthography. But the problem is, such an orthography does not exist. Okay, just, just with this uh, caveat in mind, um, I'd like to come back to Russo Aka people and uh, uh, their language. Um, so this is the state of Arunachal Pradesh we are talking about. Um, uh, Arunachal has 26 major and over 100 minor tribes, uh, linguistically one of the most diverse states in India. Um, exact number of languages is disputed. Uh, People's Linguistic Survey of India uh, says 90 languages, but it's, it's difficult uh, to, uh, you know, uh, to say how many languages exactly because of the dialect versus language issue. Um, we are talking about this area here um, in, in Brown. Uh, this is the West Coming District of Arunachal Pradesh. And uh, um, Aka people live in the West Coming district in, in this area, in three, uh, sorry, four circles, Trijana Buragao and Jamiri and Balupong. Uh, these are some glimpses of Russo Aka people. Uh, this is a typical village of the, uh, of the Oso people. Um, this is a, a traditional dress, it's a typical house. And it's a four generation of uh, Oso Akas in one frame. Um, population would be around um, between nine to 10,000 because there were about 8,000 in uh, 2011 census. Number of uh, speakers is about 4,000 uh, 4, as we can uh, make, a, make an estimate. Um, six, 6B on the aged scale. Um, and uh, uh, there is a lot of discussion about uh, the affiliation of the language. Uh, some people uh, suggesting you, that even it may be an isolate. Um, but I, um, I think the evidence points towards the Rusish uh, affiliation along with the two other uh, languages, Sajalong and Bangru. So Uso language is known to be different from neighboring languages, especially because uh, what Grierson calls as uh, fricative phonology. We shall see some of the illustrations very soon. Uh, Harrison calls it a fabulously complex language full of wicked tongue twisters. Let's listen to some of those sounds. 
kusacıyor. Çuka. Çuka. If you can see, uh, if you can notice, uh, when, when the person uh, pronounce uh, the word for comb, it is it's not truka, but truka. You can see, uh, you can hear uh, how the uh, vowel was whispered. It was completely devoiced. Um, here is uh, another. Kıtskrin. 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 So it looks like it's it's a sort of uh, uh, conglomeration uh, or, or it's a uh, so many consonants pressed together. Um, so this is a sample for the, the wicked tongue twisters as Harrison calls it. So it's a dummy sentence made up uh, tongue twister. The Yamek clansmen pierce the tiger's liver with a needle. Um, the language has a very simple vocalic system, um, and even the consonant system, we can say quite, um, the simple consonants are, you know, nothing very um, uh, interesting here in, in the sense of uh, variety, uh, only we can note that there are nine uh, fricatives and four uh, phonemic affricates here. Um, this is where things get quite interesting three series of complex consonants. Um, we can call them clusters. I call them complex consonants, uh, depending on my own phonological analyses. Um, morphology is mostly simple and concatenative morphology, as we have in uh, different uh, tibet Burman languages. Um, nominal class prefixes exist, case marking clitics. And verbal suffixes, verbal morphology, quite complex with lots and lots of uh, suffixes uh, with a very complex semantic um, uh, system. Um, there are five tonal morphemes. This is something um, uh, interest, very interesting about this language. Uh, three lexical tones as well. Uh, so uh, this is just an example. Say full kriye nina i tso gejoma dawa. I'll, I'll not dwell on this. Uh, okay. There are two types of sequence, the consonant sequences in Urswaka, heterosyllabic and totosyllabic. This is important for our discussion, so I'll just uh, dwell uh, on these a little, a little more. Um, one example is sum fu. You can see here, sum is one syllable and fu. So heterosyllabic consonant uh, sequences. Um, we, th these are straightforward and it's not difficult to write them. Uh, is the uh, tautosyllabic onset sequences, uh, if you want to call them as onset clusters or as I call <clears throat> complex consonants. Ch um, is mitunskin, sadu sound, and ts mram is a type of fish. You can see ts and mra sound there. Uh, so these are the ones uh, are quite complex and interesting. Uh, I'm going to present uh, very briefly. I, I don't have time to explain uh, each slide here. Just uh, analysis of uh, these surface affricates. There are four surface affricates and uh, uh, very many consonant sequences, uh, totally 42 of these. Um, then this is how I identify went about um, an analyzing them. Uh, so three things to uh, make sense of these, cross speaker variation, free variance, and allophones. Uh, so using the classical uh, phonemic method uh, of Pike, um, we can identify that due to you know large uh, uh, quantity of data, we get all these uh, um, uh, uh, tokens, and then uh, we have to um, classify them by cross speaker uh, variation. Once cross speaker variation has been uh, accounted for, we get 33 sequences again. And uh, those are due to allophony. I will not uh, dwell uh, with that. Um, after allophony is solved, we get about 28 sequences. Um, we, the, the team, and I, we, we did the coronal uh, consonant palatography because coronal consonants are the most difficult uh, in this language. So uh, we did uh, um, a charcoal palatography um, and lingua grams like this. 
and this helped us to solve a big puzzle uh, in in the in the language. Um, so we identified four places of uh, of articulation: a dental alveolar retroflex and palatalized uh, coronals. And uh, three are actually uh, contrastive. Um, palatal is not uh, contrastive there. This this is simply a phonological analysis. Um, and we arrived at these um, uh, uh, th these these many coronal consonants. So finally, this is the orthography uh, that we uh, um, arrived in uh, arrived at. Um, 26 consonants, 28 uh, complex consonants, and uh, uh, six vowels. Um, these are the com complex consonants, clusters, uh, or clusters, whatever you want to call them. Okay. Coming to the topic of today, orthography, uh, brief history. Um, if you're already um, very bored with the phonological stuff, um, here is the, where the uh, story begins. Um, the first book in Osaka produ was produced in 1999, uh, quite accidentally. I was working in a um, Jesuit school at that time, which uh, uh, had just begun. And I went about in the village just learning a few sounds of the language because I was fascinated with the sounds. And the, um, uh, a, a, a local church committee uh, said we would like to uh, produce something for the uh, you know, uh, uh, write down our songs uh, so that we can sing. Um, and that's how the journey began. We produced uh, a small little booklet in 1999. Um, and uh, because of the, uh, the mythological story that I narrated, uh, when people uh, repeatedly told me that our language cannot be written because it's too complex and they themselves were struggling to write it, uh, when actually the language was written, they were very excited and uh, the village leaders um, and the uh, leaders from the tribe uh, got in touch with me and uh, my collaborators and encouraged me to uh, keep the work going. And we had the uh, first uh, primer in 2005, Ako Nakako. Ako is little ch Ako is little children. Na is the positive case marker, um, and Kako is um, book. Uh, then a full fledged implementation of orthography took place in uh, with with this book, uh, Nozasa, uh, beautiful songs in two thousand twelve. Uh, we thought of printing about two hundred copies, saying nobody is reading yet. We need to uh, teach people, um, and people may not understand how to read and all that. But the printer said uh, it's, it's good to have uh, 500 copies um, that is more cost effective. So we went for uh, 500 copies thinking this will last about uh, 10 years. Uh, but people got so excited about this within two years, all the copies were uh, sold out. Uh, for a uh, for a tribe of 10,000 people, uh, to uh, you know, have these copies sold out within such a short time, uh, you know, illustrates the example of how much people value when their language is written. Uh, many people wouldn't know how to read, but but still they bought the uh, copies. Then we um, uh, produce a mobile dictionary app, a talking dictionary with the uh, with the sounds, um, sound recordings, etc. This is still under development. Um, it, this was in 2000. We, we have a, um, a Aka website where uh, um, alphabet learning um, is illustrated. For example, uh, here, if you can see the pointer. Um, and uh, produced a storybook in 2018, uh, Akona uh, children's little children's stories. Um, the alphabet chart was published in 2018 again. Uh, so these were some of the initiatives, um, and uh, the community. Uh, I'm very grateful to the Oso Aka community. Some of you are present uh, here. Thank you for being here. And uh, um, uh, I must say, we have been very lucky. Um, we haven't had the problems that we hear about um, in, in many other communities about the orthography, orthographic wars, or orthography wars, etc. And dialect fights and all that. Uh, the community is very strongly united. 
Um, and they, they really want their language to survive and uh, succeed. Uh, some points. Uh, from the leadership, we got constant enc encouragement funds to print books uh, for our meetings. Um, they also requested us uh, for curriculum and textbooks, um, so much so that in 2016, a symposium was organized, and they said, let us start teaching in schools immediately. Then I said, um, that would be counterproductive. We need to do a lot, of, a lot more research. We need to... Um, first train the teachers, only then we should implement. Otherwise, uh, it, uh, if the teachers are confused, children will con uh, get confused as well, and it will be counterproductive. Uh, so um, anyway, in general, uh, I must say efforts to pass on the language to children picked up. Um, um, for example, Oswaka people had uh, this, this uh, um, phase where Children's names are all uh, like, uh, uh, you know, Sanjay, Ajay, uh, Sanjana, and, and, uh, and these kind of names, Sanskritic names. Before that, um, many people have uh, Buddhist names, Dorji, Sange, and, and, and all those names. Um, thanks to the efforts of the team, now uh, more and more educated people are uh, uh, giving Oso names. So we have uh, Melusa, Rinoha, um, uh, Pudyam. And uh, uh, there is one um, also I, I heard, uh, uh, which means tiger. Um, so these kind of names, this, this is, is becoming a trend now. Uh, people are, even educated people who would only speak Hindi earlier uh, are now speaking uh, Aka at home. In, uh, Syria, uh, in rural areas, uh, because of the awareness now, there is uh, 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 slowness, uh, the, the decline in the rural areas it has slowed down. I wouldn't say it has completely stopped, but there is decline still, but it's definitely uh, slowed down. Uh, but still there is significant de decline of the language in uh, Balupong and uh, uh, Tipi, and to a certain extent in Tijino as well. Also, we had some opposition, um, uh, the question of dialects um, and the script question. Um, coming to the script question, um, there were some who felt that we should go for our own script. Um, then initially when we uh, developed the orthography, um, um, I myself uh, said we could go for any script, it doesn't matter. Uh, we could go for Devanagari or we could devise our own script um, and uh, we also could uh, um, implement, uh, uh, the, adapt the Roman script. Um, there were uh, a few people uh, trying to develop their own script, um, uh, at least two of them, um, Afo Aglaso and uh, Mali Isi Diso. Um, but in 2016, when there was a general conference, the community felt that um, uh, it would be commendable to have our own script in, in the future, but we simply do not have time. Our language is disappearing fast. So therefore, based on the principle of transfer of knowledge, which I um, mentioned earlier, it is good that children who are already familiar with the, um, uh, the, the Roman script, uh, it is easier for them to read um, if, if the books are in uh, Akha, uh, you know, uh, in, in, the, in the Roman script. So that is how the Roman script was implemented. Um, also considering the enormous amount of resources that would be required to uh, devise a, a new script. Perhaps I hope uh, one day there will be uh, our own script in future. Um, we also uh, did a lot of mobilization among the leaders, uh, sometimes our own initiative, sometimes initiatives from the uh, leaders themselves. Um, uh, we had two major symposia, one in 2016 and 2017, uh, where, where the um, Akka society came together and uh, there was a lot of awareness about language decline and also about the implementation of the orthography. Um, okay. So this is basically um, checking our orthography and having discussions with the elders and leaders. So there are lots of signs of hope now. Um, for example, uh, the Urso Aka literature team was formed in 2017. Earlier, when we um, devised the orthography, it was about a small team of two or three people. Initially, it was uh, Apong Rumo, uh, Paryonimaso, who unfortunately has passed away, and uh, me, three of us. 
Um, and then more and more people joined us. Uh, we, we, we can see uh, people uh, of different age groups, um, some very well-educated postgraduate level, some are uh, not very well-educated, maybe high school level, but very um, fluent in their own language. Um, the the photo below shows that we, uh, shows the meeting that we are having with the um, uh, some of the youth leaders of the uh, Akashatwakun the Epix body. Um, 2021, we formed the Akha Language uh, Academy. Um, uh, Dorji, who is here, uh, if you can see the pointer, um, is as a young um, um, upcoming leader. He is our president. Um, we have. Uh, four women uh, in our uh, language academy. This is something quite rare. We can see uh, in many tribes, language academies are um, exclusively men's club. Um, we consider ourselves uh, very lucky uh, to have four women. Our aim is eventually to have 50-50 uh, representation. We are working towards that. And they bring in uh, enormous amount of resourcefulness um, to, uh, to the language academy. So we have all these language warriors uh, in, spread out in different villages and uh, working relentlessly to, um, to preserve the language and contributing to the early literature development. Um, I won't mention each one by name, but um, uh, we, have a, um, we have a large team of people who um, are uh, uh, carrying forward this work. Um, we had an exi exciting, uh, uh, moment in uh, 2017 uh, where for the first time a uh, legal document was composed and read out in Akka. This is uh, uh, our president of the uh, Akka Language Academy, Dorji, reading that uh, document in, in their own language for the first time in a, uh, in a clan meeting. Um, I will play this. Um, I'm I'm trying to play the recording. I'm sorry, we have uh, some technical issue and the slide is not moving or playing is simply stuck. Um, Uh, I'm sorry, the slide is not playing. Uh, the uh, video is not playing for some reason. This is uh, a mobilization among various church groups. Um, none of them could read or write in Aka. Now um, they, they are able to sing in their own language. Uh, again, I think the slide is not, the video is not playing. Um, the youth are producing their own uh, videos uh, on YouTube, etc. Uh, even that video, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not playing. So finally, the story of Akunakako, the, our, our latest book. Um, you can see the beautiful art. Uh, we decided when we uh, made this textbook, we will uh, not take any matter from uh, um, the internet or uh, from anywhere outside. We have enough resources among our own youth. So um, uh, there was a hidden talent uh, in in uh, Balukpong, his name is Ajay Sagro. He illustrated the entire book, and this is one of his uh, beautiful uh, drawings, um, which we used for the textbook. Um, so this is the team. This is uh, Ajay Sagro and Yachi Jebiso uh, with me. Uh, three of us uh, basically uh, wrote this book uh, together, and this some of the pictures from the book this one is the cover page and one uh, the other one is uh, um, the in, one of the inside uh, diagrams um this has been recently approved by the scar ert at itanagar and we are going to implement this book after so many years of preparation um in, in schools in the coming session uh thank you uh, that's all i had to say uh, 
so this is the this is the book if you can see this um I cannot talk. I'll, I'll just show some pages here. Um, so, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vijay, for giving us such a wonderful talk. It is indeed so interesting and illuminative. Indeed, I guess uh, many of us may be wanting to ask uh, queries and questions. So, the room is now open for discussion. So anybody uh, who wants to have can come in. Yeah. Anybody, any questions, any query? Dr. Pao Tang, any questions do you want to? Yeah, I have a question, no doubt, but I wanted others to come in and me to go last. But anyway, just to open up the floor. So uh, it was a very, very, what you say, uh, not only interesting, but it takes us back to our own uh, memories. So I really enjoyed it. So I, with full attention, I enjoyed your talk. So two things strikes me. One is uh, at the beginning, uh, you talk about the script of Rusu being eaten up by uh, by the people because they were hungry. So this is a, a, a myth or mythological stories which runs across uh, many Tibetan Burman languages, maybe outside of Tibetan Burman languages as well. So though this may be a myth, uh, what is, what would be, I was speculating, what could be the reason why this same sort of uh, story you find in many other languages? Is it that it is carried over uh, from one community to the, uh, to the other community? Somehow <clears throat> it's carried. So we don't know the medium, perhaps it goes, one person hears it from another language and this may, may be borrowed by another community. So this is one thing that I, I was intrigued whether you have another reason uh, why this kind of stories abounds in Tibetan Burman languages. The second is uh, specific to the orthography. So uh, looking at your uh, your phonemic chart or uh, your uh, uh, consonant inventory, uh, there are lots of uh, affricate sounds which Africates and fricative sounds. So, are you able to represent them um, based on one sound, one letter, or what are the difficulties that you face in that regard? These are my two questions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hockey. Uh, first of all, about the story, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's an interesting question. Um, I too do not know. I mean, uh, I have heard this story from um, uh, at least uh, three other, three or four other tribes. Um, these etiological stories, that is, like you know, explaining the beginning of something or explaining an event uh, to make sense of the uh, present, um, they I think are shared, uh, or maybe these these are uh, these stories are so ancient. Even before languages get differentiated, they were there, and then each group which uh, you know uh, got derived from a particular uh, ethnic group or a linguistic group carried over the story perhaps coming to the second question about the africa this this was a, a extremely tough um, a job to represent the africates of uh, Uswaka, and not only africates also uh, you know the constant sequences um, it, it was not until i finished my um, uh, PhD that I really made a complete sense of this. Uh, what we did was initially we went by, uh, you know, uh, initial uh, phonemic analysis and uh, intuition. Fortunately, those intuition, intuitions uh, turned out to be mostly right. Um, for example, now we have uh, the whole sequence of pr, uh, tr, kr, br, dr, and uh, r. So um, we started representing them with for example, as a P and R. So I did not know sufficient uh, phonology back then in 1999. I was not a linguist. Um, so I went by what I uh, what I heard. 
So now we know that it is uh, um, it, it's the features of uh, uh, retroflexibilities added to per and made a complex consonant is is made there. So today, if I were writing, I would I would say I, I would write it as per and with with the uh, sure the retroflex uh, sibilant. But then um, uh, we had a discussion with the Akka Language Academy, also uh, uh, some of the Akka people who are very fluent in reading now. Then they said this works for us, so we do not have to change. So uh, now don't let's not fix something that is not broken. It is only a question of uh, you know better representation. But you know uh, we we don't need one more extra special symbol. Whatever is available on the English keyboard should work for us. So we we have kept is uh, P R T R D R for tr tr dr etc. Uh, so uh, we also had. Uh, um, um, uh, pro, you know, I, when I worked out the entire system, actually, I, I wanted to make it perfect. And uh, I suggested to the uh, Akka Language Academy. And it was they who educated me, saying there is no perfect script. Because um, I used to tell them when, uh, you know, our, I used to always tell them our script is not 100% uh, perfect, but we can confidently go ahead. And the, they they told me the same thing. Our script is not perfect. You have told us as an expert, and but we can go ahead with this. We let us not uh, change. For example, Spanish N, we, which we uh, so initially I thought it it was phonemic because it it was a, a rare consonant which was occurring a word finally, and there was a contrast there. Uh, then. Uh, during the phonological analysis, we know that now uh, it, it's, it's, it's not actually word final. Uh, uh, underlyingly, there is a E sound, which induces palatalization, and then the E sound is deleted, uh, but the effect remains. So therefore, it is simply a, a question of uh, uh, assimilation. Therefore, I wanted to get rid of that and said uh, near sound should be represented with the two sounds because they're actually two sounds. And they said, no, we, we like it. Let's Let's keep it. So uh, it all depends on uh, how the community feels uh, comfortable and what kind of discussion uh, goes on. Uh, so to come back to the question, Africates, yes, there were a lot of struggles and uh, uh, I wish we ha I had more time to explain all the struggles that uh, we went through. Thank you. Uh, one more thing, uh, what is the dichrity over the ga sound, the z, uh, z sound, the ga sound? Yeah, it's it's the voiced velar fricative, so it's it's a uh, uh, sound, and uh, uh, Aka people them they call themselves also actually also, and uh, uh, salt is ru, and uh, ten is r. The, these are some of the uh, words with that sound. So in your underlining uh, statement, you said you would like to avoid the diacritic. So yes, is the diacritic over a ga will have a problem in uh, printing. So how do people cope up with the, those difficulties? Yes, we we actually discussed this as well as uh, as well. So I said we can simplify the entire uh, orthography instead of uh, uh, that diacritic. Let us have g and h. So, uh, so then they said, no, this is our, uh, this is our language, ka, because this language, this sound is uh, quite unique to us compared to our neighbors. And uh, uh, we are already, you know, used to that sound, seeing that sound, we know how to pronounce. If you write GH, then uh, people from the outside may think it is a G sound of Hindi. And therefore, we don't want people to read like that. Uh, even if uh, people have difficulty, let them know that this is a unique sound, and therefore we will keep it uh, keep keep this sound as it is. This was the advice that uh, the language academy uh, actually that time it was uh, the literature team uh, that gave me. And and we do have difficulty in representing. I have uh, made a, a computer keyboard for Uso, and we have uh, we have uh, distributed it. We also have made a, a mobile. Uh, app with the all these representations uh, so there is no problem it's the the keyboard is called nupim uh, nupim means one who uh, pecks the uh, language uh, nupim is pew is uh, this pecking action so there's a nice name there uh, nupim so uh, we have a mobile app and we have also a keyboard um, uh, that can you know uh, uh, help us to write this Uh, 
I have one question like regarding the vowel, uh, especially the uh, high back rounded vowels, how to uh, put it up in a orthographic form for that particular pronunciations of the, uh, the uh, uh, when we write, uh, how, how will it be that this form I just want to know about? Uh, yeah, uh, so Uso has, a, um, the, in Uso it's more of a central vowel. Sometimes, uh, you know, earlier I used to read, uh, re, uh, write it as a um, uh, high back unrounded vowel. Uh, then uh, the phonetic analysis showed it's, it's much more towards the center. Uh, so um, we write it with U and double dot. Um, and uh, uh, Uso also has a schwa-like vowel, uh, uh, but it's not phonemic, so we, we don't need to distinguish between uh, these. Two. In, for example, in Tenidye, uh, uh is written with uh, um, uh, with uh, as as u double dot. Uh, so for us, it is uh, sa, uh vowel. That's the um, high back unrounded vowel, uh, or, or central uh, unrounded vowel, high central unrounded. Any other questions? Any uh, uh, yeah, I have one as well. If yeah, please go. But uh, thanks. Uh, did I catch that you did palatography? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Could could you? This is really interesting because I have not heard of many people doing that in the region. And vowels are easy because you can look at formants and figure out. Okay, it's not unrounded back. It's this instead. Could you explain a little bit what you did for palatography? How many people did you look at? Was there reluctance to do something so foreign? I mean, foreign in the sense of it's kind of weird whether you're doing it painting or electropalatography. Could you expand on this a little bit? Yes. Um, uh, palatography was uh, interesting and it turned out to be crucial for our analysis later on uh, because it very clearly demonstrated the uh, difference between uh, um, the, the, uh, some of the consonants like sir and sir. If, if, if you, you know, it, there's so much, so, so little difference between these. Uh, for also people, it's very obvious, but for 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 uh, anybody else, it's not it's not at all. Um, also, we we needed uh, evidence for uh, palatalization. Uh, uh, palatalization was easy, but retroflexion and what is the extent of retroflexion, etc. Um, right. And and we 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 came to know that the retro retroflexion here is very different from the uh, retroflexion of the southern languages, um, where the in Tamil, for example, the tongue is curled back. We we Discovered that tongue, tongue is not curled back in this retroflexion. It is uh, it is flat, but then it's a uh, uh, drawing back of the tongue, and then the very very slight uh, curve, uh, curvature of the tongue uh, in the front. Um, coming to the process itself, I, I proposed to the documentation team in uh, two thousand seventeen that look uh, if we really need to uh, solve this uh, complex uh, puzzle, we might want to. Uh, do this. And uh, we had a discussion about how difficult that would be. Um, there is a, there's discomfort, you know, uh, coloring right. your tongue black and uh, all sorts of things. So it's very reluctant, actually, uh, initially, um, because each time they have to wash their mouth with the orange juice to remove the oil and it, it becomes cumbersome. Um, but I was very inspired by their enthusiasm. They said, nothing doing, we must discover this, and this is good for our language. Uh, so uh, five of them participated, and uh, five of them were quite enthusiastic. And uh, despite all the discomfort, um, I must thank them that they participated in this. And they were very happy with the result at the end. Um, yeah, great. Thank you. That's, thank that's you. wonderful. Oh, good evening, sir. Hello, good evening. Oh, yeah, yeah. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Okay. Okay, uh, sir, two quick questions. One is, uh, <clears throat> okay, just a uh, background information as in uh, uh, with some, uh, uh, based on my little experience. Uh, Liang Mai is a language that I work on. And this language has somehow uh, adopted the Roman uh, script uh, for orthography. And they have uh, translated Bible and hymnals and you know, those things. And recently, uh, the government of Manipur has uh, allowed this language to be taught in school. 
now uh, of course like uh, uh, now the, the problem is uh, the orthography the writing system has differ uh, from the you know more conventional system that is used in the bible of course bible it may not be a perfect representation but that was the most important piece of literature for many years and uh, there has been some uh, diversion um, variation and now with the coming of this uh, social network you know, this um, social media and all these things everyone is writing the language in the form that they think is uh, right now there there's uh, too many variation going on now and then it has become a matter of uh, great concern for the community speaker because uh, you know the community people wanted to have this uniformity in writing system in the orthography so how do we bring this uh, kind of uniformity uh, to the writing system uh, of the community or of the language that is one and the second one is um, how do we represent tone in orthography is there uh, uh, this language russo aka has tonal system or is a tonal language or um, how do we represent uh, orthography in tonal language thank you sir thank you very much for your question uh, both are very important questions and uh, 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 allow me to dwell a little more on the um, question of uniformity uh, mm -hmm. so um Uniformity is a quest of every uh, community, I suppose, uh, that we should all write similarly. But I think it's, it's a mirage that we are chasing. It's never possible. Um, uh, even in English, there is no uniformity. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, pe young people will write anyway. Um, so the, the moment they are discouraged in writing, they will not write at all. So it is good that they're writing something rather than not writing at all. Um, mm. uh, if you see any established language, uh, whether it's German, English, or any, any texting language is very different from standard orthography. So we should not be too concerned about it. We should be happy that young people are texting. So okay. it doesn't matter what spellings mm. they use. They, they are texting, they're using their language. So, mm. and, and uh, uh, it, it doesn't matter because any language, even established languages, the texting language is very different. That's one thing. Mm. Uh, secondly, this question of uniformity is giving um, a, a lot of, uh, you know, giving rise to language wars. I know uh, at least two tribes right now in, uh, there, are may, there are many more I know, but two tribes are very deeply uh, involved in language wars uh, between two groups. Um, one very good rule for me would be this. If something is not broken, don't fix it. If a orthography is going well, it is a well established uh, for maybe let's say 15, 20 years, people are all getting used to it. Do not fix it. Even if, it's, even if it is imperfect, if it gives rise to confusion, do not fix it because it will give rise to language wars. And then uh, the best example is Cornish in uh, England. They fought for their perfect spelling for 70 years. And by the time they solved their fight, the language was dead. So this is going to happen to our languages if we start fighting on that. Um, uh, there is, there is a, an example of this, uh, 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 somebody thinking that you know one letter, one sound rule is very important. It should trump all the other rules and giving, uh, you know, uh, uh, instead of two letters, um, uh, introducing some letter which is not connected to the sound in English. So this, this violates the principle of transfer of knowledge. Children are always already used to a particular sound in English, and that has to be represented more or less in a similar way in, 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 the, in your language as, as well. Otherwise, it's simply a, too much of a cognitive burden for children to bear. It is not child-friendly at all. And, mm. and this, this is going to have a lot of adverse effect on orthography. Um, then, um, so basically to answer the question about uniformity, if something is working beautifully, do not introduce changes arbitrarily. So unless there's a very, very good reason and there's a general agreement. Coming to the question of, uh, I mean, this is what I would say. Uh, there may be differences between in this. Okay, tone. Again, um, tone may or may not be helpful in representation. Uh, there are some people who say, all tones must be represented. And this is impossible for uh, Akka language because tones are moving all, all, the, um, all the time. 
Um, mm. There is a floating tone, and uh, if uh, floating tone expresses itself as a low tone with a with a, um, uh, a floating high tone at the left edge, and if it is uh, preceded by a high tone, the high tone gets deleted here. Uh, whichever high tone uh, precedes it. So how do we represent that? Should we represent, uh, do the surface representation or should we do the um, a, you know, underlying representation? There is, there, is, there is a problem there. We tried both and we decided that this is going to create a lot of uh, confusion. So we are not representing lexical tone unless it's absolutely necessary to uh, make the meaning clear. For example, zu is to die, zu is to ask. So if a word is used in a, um, you know, isolation, uh, then we say, if you want to say ask and somebody mis may misunderstand it is die, then we say uh, put a high tone. Otherwise, from the sentence context, tones, you know, the meaning is clear, said do not use a tone. Where we actually need to use the tones in um, Akka orthography is uh, the grammatical tone. Otherwise, um, the case marking is all confusion. Uh, uh, let me give one example. Uh, if I say e, e, gada, so, which means the high tone there, E, E, E. E is actually the third person singular, though it is the tone that is hosting the case marking there. Um, so uh, what is normally called the, uh, usually called the anti-ergative of uh, La Polla is marked with a high tone in this language, E, E, Gida. So E is more like a patient here or an object of the sentence. So e e gada is um, e that one who, who, whichever entity was represented by he got beaten, and e with low tone he is the one who is doing the action. So mm -hmm. the same thing I can without changing the uh, you know pronouns anyway I can say e e gada meaning will not change. Mm -hmm. So you can see the confusion there. So we need to um, so we always represent that tone uh, and also possessive case if you can see here um, um, there is a uh, on 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 na ah, there is a, a line here that is necessary because again it is the pronoun that is a uh, third person plural pronoun that is hosting the tone there so with the pronoun we need to mark the tone otherwise uh, there there will be uh, confusion instead of children's book we could read it as children are books. So therefore that tone is necessary. Mm -hmm. So we are minimizing the tone marking, not to uh, add too much visual burden. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think any, any, any queries? Is there any strategies to avoid uh, language wars? Uh, among native speakers, because most of the time it's not so much uh, with uh, the letters, sometimes human issues. Yes. So many things uh, prop up, and there is no one way to um, go ahead with. This is what I find in most of the languages, uh, at least I'm associated. It's a human issue and not more so, not, uh, more so with the letters that they adopt. Yeah. Yes, um, I, I must say that uh, with the with the Uso people, we have been very lucky. They have been very understanding. Uh, even when they had disputes and all that, we have been able to uh, talk it out and solve them. Um, so I, um, in our approach, we have done uh, two things. One is uh, if there is any uh, adverse opinion or anything, we always treat them as friends and uh, take time to discuss. Um, uh, as you said, uh, sir, uh, most of the time it is uh, human issues like ego clashes of uh, among the leaders. So that's what gives rise to. Uh, uh, we must capitalize on one fact that both these warring factors, they are very passionate about their language. So that, that is our uh, uh, entry point in solving this issue because um, nobody wants their language to die. So uh, we have been able to uh, show to people that if you continue fighting, um, it's not about you, our language is in danger. So that message goes very powerfully across. Then about the dialects, um, each one thinks that their dialect is the real language. Now, that is a very common thing in, uh, uh, in Northeast or anywhere else, I suppose. Um, so I use this example. 
in in a garden do you want only one type of flowers or many types of flowers uh, when we ask this to the uh, you know uh, to the public people usually, usually say of course it's many types of flowers are more beautiful so so why do we need to suppress one language and you know say that that is uh, not a real language uh, and and this is the better language so we don't have to say that so our agreement is this if i am writing in my dialect i will not write in a so called standard language i will write in my dialect uh, and somebody else from that village is writing they will write their, their language so 50 60 uh, years down the line let a standard language emerge by itself and this has worked for us uh, it may not work for every tribe every situation i think each situation is unique and they have to find their own solutions but for us these two things worked um, to, to to summarize uh, one is to show that uh, you know, if we fight, our language will be harmed. Secondly, it is good to have variety and diversity than uh, one standard language. Okay, lastly, that brings us uh, to my last question, uh, uh, similar to the one that I raised. Uh, I don't know whether your language to which you are associated is introduced in school. So many of the smaller languages in Nagaland and Manipur they have some form of uh, education in the uh, curriculum. So there, uh, these uh, syllables are prepared using multiple, as you say, multiple variant spelling, and which you, I also agree that uh, there should not be a problem so long as the, the language is taught. Uh, but uh, what, what are the situations that you face in Arunachal Pradesh with regards to Sanskritization? Because, or uh, there will be a uh, script. So most languages in Arunachal Pradesh are faced with uh, imminent uh, threat from Hindi and also the Devnagri script. So what is your take over there? Um, yeah, uh, so uh, in Arunachal, uh, there is a, again, it's, it's a conflict, a con contradictory uh, messages from the, from the state uh, and, and central government. Uh, on the one hand, people say uh, local languages are very important. And um, on the other hand, uh, the support is little. And um, uh, the message is that Hindi is more important and, and things like that. So these, these conflicting messages uh, exist uh, together. Um, uh, Arunachali languages are um, threatened, not so threatened by Devanagari script as of now, um, because they have... Uh, their own mind and then they they uh, most of them have uh, adopted uh, roman script uh, i don't remember any example uh, uh, maybe some sometime uh, somewhere in eastern arunachal one or two examples otherwise um, it, it's either boti script or their own script or uh, roman script uh, even state government is um, supporting uh, roman script initiatives uh, uh, for whatever uh, uh, reason but Hindi is a big threat to the uh, local language of Arunachal Pradesh. It's, it's just sweeping them, uh, you know, off their feet. Mm. Akha itself in the, in, in the townships, it is uh, hardly any child is speaking uh, their own mother tongue now, um, except these few people who are suddenly becoming aware and then teaching their mother tongue. Uh, otherwise, uh, um, Hindi is really, um, um, you know, making... Uh, big inroads. So in our messaging, so uh, we, we we have uh, um, uh, this way of uh, talking to people. Uh, you don't have to give up uh, your language to learn Hindi or English because if, if it is becoming an either or question, people will definitely choose English or Hindi. There's no doubt about it. If it is my language versus Hindi and English, people will always, you know, parents will think, you know, uh, my language is beautiful, but for my child's future, it is Hindi or English that is important. So they will favor that language. So um, uh, research shows that if you are, we all know this, I'm preaching to the choir, uh, sorry for that. But uh, if you are, you know, well-grounded in your own language, you learn Hindi and English better because your conceptual foundation is better. 
um, you, your uh, uh, you know way of understanding is in one language is better. So those skills can be transferred. It's a five years of uh, amazing amount of skills that you bring into school, and those skills can be transferred to any other language. So that is the messaging that we are trying to um, you know formulate and, and, and disseminate, and that seems to be working. So when we say if you teach your uh, child your mother tongue. Uh, your child will learn better English. That is where people will sit up and uh, take notice. And it, it's, it's true. It's, it's, it's proven. Um, so uh, state itself, as we know, uh, right now, NEP has come and Arunachal government and governments all over Northeast are taking so many uh, initiatives. But at the same time, uh, many are half-hearted measures. We don't know what will uh, happen to the, uh, the to the uh, gov government initiatives, whether they will die out after some time. But I think the whole um, uh, question is whether the communities will take responsibility and, and the initiatives to preserve their languages. And that is the only way forward, I think. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having uh, such a wonderful talk. Uh, with this, uh, I would like to hand over to Dr. Vijay Kumar. I think uh, we have a question in the chat box. From uh, it's a same, same. Yeah, same, it's, it's almost yeah. the same thing. Already, uh, yeah. Okay, answered the questions. Yeah. If, uh, yeah. Should I, should I answer that? Uh, answer that. Uh, yeah. Um, well, in in Aka. We represent tones. Um, yeah, the question is, uh, how do we represent tones in Ursuaka orthography? So whenever there's a, a high tone, we put an acute accent. So it's it's basically uh, the African way of uh, marking uh, tones. Um, and recently after uh, Larry <laughs> Hammond's letter, uh, sorry, not letter, uh, uh, the article about Koki Tado, um, there is awareness about the so-called African system, uh, a tonal system. Uh, many people do not agree with this classification, but we found that is a simpler way of uh, representing tones. So high tone is always marked with the um, uh, acute accent and a low tone with the grave accent and a middle tone with the, with the uh, macron on top. That is the line on the top, on top of the vowel. Uh, to this, uh, come to the second part of your question, whether where tones have to be marked um, in each syllable. Uh, no, we don't do that because that will be extremely cumbersome to write and also to read. Um, so only when necessary, when the context uh, does not specify or, or make it clear, you know, the meaning of a sentence, um, we mark a lexical tone. Um, and the functional load of tone in Akka is not, not great. So therefore, it, it is possible for us to do that. And um, we uh, grammatical tone, certain tone, grammatical tones, as I said, uh, we always mark, for example, that uh, anti ergative uh, case, we, we, uh, we always mark. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, with that clarification, I think uh, our question and answer session is over. So I would like to thank uh, Dr. Bobita for smoothly sharing this session. Now, uh, I would like to request uh, Secretary of the Arti Plane Society, Dr. Monali Longmailai for more of things. Over to you, Dr. Monali. Thank you, Dr. Bijan, for <clears throat> allowing me to uh, give vote of thanks uh, for this um, lecture series on uh, orthography development for Kibote Brahman languages. I would like to thank our uh, speaker, Dr. Vijay Soja, for his um, wonderful um, demonstration of the orthography uh, work and um, development in the Rushwaka uh, language spoken in Arunachal Pradesh. Uh, we had a very uh, wonderful discussion today, and a, a huge thanks to also our participants who have been actively taking part throughout all the discussions of the Tiblani events, including today's. I would also like to thank our um, president uh, and vice president, Dr. Patong Haukip and Dr. Kitem Sunung Sang, uh, for being constant uh, source of encouragement and support throughout every program that we organize. Um, I would also like to thank Dr. Bobita Sarangtem for chairing the session today. And uh, 
Also, I'd like to thank Dr. Bijan for doing the inaugural uh, part of the session for today. And uh, thank you, everyone. Before we close the session, uh, we would like to take one group photo with our honorable speaker. So I'd like to request all the participants to turn your cameras on. Thank you very much, dear participants. Uh, we will inform you very soon uh, whenever we will have our next lecture series for the continuing series, or it could be another series. We will definitely update to you very soon uh, through WhatsApp and by mail. But thank you once again to all. And if Bijen, if you have anything to share, then I will pass it to you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, I don't have any such, you know, special announcement. As uh, Dr. Mona Lee mentioned, that if we are going to have another, you know, speaker for this series uh, of orthography, then definitely we are going to up in, in our WhatsApp group as well as to the personal mails. Thank you everyone for making this event a very successful and fruitful. We have a very good discussion. So thank you once again and have a pleasant evening to all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank Good you. Night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.